Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I'd like to welcome you to the Olmsted Pavilion for Olmsted 200. Um, and the presentation today is going to be about the Historic American Landscape Survey. My name is Chris Stevens, and I'm the Senior Landscape Architect for the Historic American Landscape Survey. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I'm based, we're based in Washington, D.C., and we're a uh, National Park Service program and we're a partner to the Historic American Building Survey, which is the very first preservation organization in the National Park Service, founded in 1933 as a New Deal program to put out-of-work architects to work and to document America's rapidly vanishing antique architecture. Well, when 2000 came around, House was formed, and uh, the uh, academia and the profession has caught up, and landscape uh, architecture is now recognized as, to be as important as architecture, and so, uh, sorry for the slideshow, we're having a glitch, it's blinking in and out, but um, we do uh, all three of our programs, it's the Historic American Building Survey, the Historic American Landscape, uh, sorry, Historic American Engineering Record, and the Historic American Landscape Survey. All three of us do the three basic forms of documentation, and that is drawings, large, uh, drawings, large format photographs, and historic reports, and together that fully documents a site. And uh, together our um, collection goes to the Library of Congress, and it's one of the largest uh, collections there, and one of the most popular, um, especially through K through 12 students. And it's archived for perpetuity, and it's available online, copyright free. And uh, our other partners, so we're part of a partnership between the National Park Service, the Library of Congress, and the um, American Society of Landscape Architects. And I'd like to point out a lot of you here are uh, members and work with House through as volunteers with the National Park Service. Um, we have the Historic Preservation Professional Practice Network, and then there's a House subcommittee under that that advises House and advises the National Park Service. And then we have 47 volunteer House liaisons, one for each of the ASLA chapters across the country. And so we couldn't do this without the Library of Congress and without the American Society of Landscape Architects. And so I'd like to thank you all today, and we're going to talk about the, uh, the House Challenge, which is a competition we have every year for short format historical reports. We find it's a really great way to get people engaged across the country, folks that have never been involved with documentation before. And uh, so I'm not sure what, what you're seeing at any given time, but this is a little history of when we were... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's blinking. So again, this is what I had talked about, and we uh, the, the history of the three programs. Yeah, the space part doesn't. Sorry. Okay, so uh, we've been having a house challenge since 2010. Yes, yeah. it's a challenge. Yeah, it's always a challenge. Um, but we've been having it since 2010, and Chris Patillo, who was the former House uh, liaison for the Northern California chapter, um, was the first person to come up with the idea that we do this to get people involved. And it's led to hundreds and hundreds of reports going into our collection. The most ever was uh, the challenge we had uh, for the New Deal landscapes, where we had 47 entries. And this year we decided to do Olmsted landscapes and partner with the National Association for Olmsted Parks in promoting it um, to try to capture the great uh, Olmsted landscapes across the country. And I have to shout out to the Olmsted Center for Landscape Preservation and the National, yes, Elliot's here, and the, uh, the Frederick Law Olmsted National Historic Site where my office was located for six years. Um, so Olmsted is really near and dear to me and the work of the Olmsted Brothers and the Olmsted Firm. Um, so uh, that was the competition this year. Um, we have a house short format uh, history template that's a Microsoft Word template which people can download and makes it very easy to do this. Again, it's probably the easiest form for anyone to do for, for our three types of documentation. Uh, and here's our uh, the theme for this year, which has the, uh, the different websites all involved with Homestead 200, so we're part of the celebration. So the house documentation, as I said, goes to the Library of Congress and it will be there forever once it gets into the collection and it will be available online, downloadable and copyright free. Um, and the photo, if you were seeing it, is the first at the Frederick Longstead National Historic Site. 
um, we have cash prizes, and the Park Service gives uh, cash prizes to the first, second, and third place. Um, but this year it's different. Uh, the National Association for Homestead Parks is giving certificates for the submission by a college or graduate student for the work of, an Olmstead, of the Olmstead firm in Ohio and for non-park work of the Olmstead firm. So we have additional prizes this year, which is very exciting. Um, and so these were our entries this year. We received 17 entries. And every year, I think our entries get stronger and stronger because people become more familiar with it and it might not be their first time entering. And so some really, really great projects. Um, I think it'll pop up here in a little bit. But this is a map that shows the distribution of the 17 entries. And they're all around the country, mostly on the seaboard, the West Pacific West and um, West Coast and the East Coast, and some up to the north. Um, so I'll get right to the the, uh, the prize-winning entry. So we have an honorable mention this year, really rose to the top, and it's uh, Cadwallader Park in Trent, New Jersey, uh, by Rebecca Flemmer, Evelyn Timberlake, Randy Baum, and uh, David Bostead. Um, and it's in Trenton, New Jersey, and it's a really incredible park. Um, that was an estate where the house had been designed by John Notman. And so it was an estate that evolved into a park and into a residential development, also a few uh, developments by Olmsted. Um, and it was Olmsted Senior uh, that was involved in this project. And so we'd like to uh, offer appreciation. It had a really great description, uh, very detailed description of the site. And then third place, I don't know if anyone's here from PGA Design, um, or Chris Patilla, who was actually one of the founders of the House Challenge. Um, she was involved with this. Um, so I'd like to, uh, it's a, a residential development that the Olmstead Brothers had worked on in um, Oakland, California. Um, and Stacy Farr was the architectural historian. Chris Patillo um, was involved. And then Petra Marar, Ellen Marone, Kathy Garrett, all PGA design, and then Betty Marvin, uh, planner with the historic preservation uh, in the city of Oakland. And so it's a really great one of a residential development that captured the, uh, the essence of that development in a really concise manner, and it was Olmstead Brothers, and uh, it was a really excellent report. And then second place, I know uh, she's in the audience here, it's uh, Grey Gardens, which is in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. That's another residential development and a small development, but a very important one with two, two components. And um, Allison uh, Crosby is here, and she uh, is, uh, uh, works with the City of Cambridge Historic uh, Commission. And so uh, if you could come up, I just, we're gonna have someone take a photo here. <laughs> we don't often have the winners, so this is really exciting to have. from the Olmsted Center, uh, where she worked briefly right when I was leaving, and so it's great. Um, and her wealth of information with the working with the Historic Commission is, is great for, for project work, and it's a good model to show how other commissions can be involved. And I know we have examples like Vermont, that Chabot has worked with us before in the documentation. And so, uh, anyway, thank you, Allison. And then first place, I'd like to announce, uh, he's in the audience too, uh, which is very fortuitous, but it's Doug uh, Nelson, who uh, documented the California North Coast Redwood Forest, which, um, uh, thank you, Doug. Yes. So it's interesting. I believe last year Doug was first place and Allison was second place too. And then, was that right? Or was no two years two years ago? Two years ago you were first place. But every year we get really strong entries from both Allison and Doug, and I really appreciate it because they're really capturing some great, great work. So thank you very much. And yes. Olmstead uh, Jr. was involved in this uh, over many years of planning, and it's six different parks, including a national park in Northern California. And I think one of the most interesting things is uh, it's a major conservation effort, which of course the Olmsteads were big for. But 
also the design of a parkway through and the idea of having a separate highway so you didn't ruin the experience for visitors. So roadway design is really important for this. And then I'm going to turn this over to Dee Dee to talk about the, the certificates. Undo my mic here. Well, it's great to see everyone here today. Thank you so much. And since we're having a little computer issue, I thought I'd put in an advertisement for the good old-fashioned printed version of the Master List of Design Projects, uh, edited by none other than Lucy Lawless, who's sitting here in the front row. So you can always turn to a good old book. Uh, we at the National Association for Homestead Parks, we're delighted to uh, partner with Chris and Hal's this year uh, to showcase uh, work in three particular areas. We wanted to honor a student a submission. We wanted to honor a submission about work in Ohio where there was a massive amount of work by the Olmsted firm and then non-park work. And so our first certificate, and I don't think anyone's here, but our first certificate is going for uh, the Hills and Dales Park in Kettering, Ohio. Uh, this was submitted by Bernadette Whitworth, uh, David Schmidt, Eric Sauer and Laura Stevens, three of them from Five Rivers Metro Parks and one from the Oakwood Historical Society. And we just think it's a wonderful, wonderful submission. Uh, Ohio is not the state that you typically think of when you're thinking of Olmsted projects, but in fact there were many. Um, you will see, you may see, that there were about 6,000 projects around the country undertaken uh, by the Olmsted firm over a period of about 100 years. And Ohio, interestingly, in the hierarchy of states with the greatest number of project records, comes in at six. So Massachusetts had more than 2,000, New York at 773, Pennsylvania, Washington, Connecticut, and then Ohio at 279 projects. So it is a state where we really would like to see more research, much to be done there. And what, what kind of projects are we talking about in Ohio? Cincinnati Parks, Hebrew Union College, the Athenaeum of Ohio, a work at the Cleveland Museum of Art, in Dayton, that area particularly rich with the National Cash Register Corporation, University of Dayton, Old River Park Sports Complex. So there is much work to be done, much interesting research to be had in the state of Ohio. So we're delighted to be able to present a commendation to the team that did Hills and Dales. And if you are looking, maybe you will see uh, a drawing from uh, the Flickr that is a really wonderful piece from Elsa Davis. For our student submission, we are delighted to be honoring Jeremy T. Ebersole. He's been a historic preservation uh, graduate program student at the University of Oregon, and his submission is to Williger Parkway. Again, in Oregon, there are 57 project records that include Portland Parks, Lewis and Clark Exposition, Linfield University, Reed College, just to name a few. And for our non-park work, we are delighted to provide a certificate of commendation to Elaine A. Mills, registered landscape architect and certified arborist, for her documentation of Lawrenceville School in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. It is such an exquisite place. I hope the green picture uh, showed on the screen. It is just truly a, a beautiful spot. And I have to get in the job number. I have neglected to raise the job number. This is job number 00052. You know it's early, you know it's senior. Uh, and again, this is one of 236 project records in the state of New Jersey, covering the vast gamut of work by the Olmsted firm, residential, parks and parkways, institutional campuses. Uh, and this was one of the goals of Olmsted 200, to really draw attention to the vast array of work uh, by the Olmsted firm over a period of 100 years. And we are delighted to have a great number of members of our Olmsted network in New Jersey, including the Branchburg Park Alliance, the Wallader Park that you heard about, Essex County Parks, Maplewood Memorial Park Conservancy, just to name a few. And here's a drawing, a 
hopefully you will see from job number 00052 of Lawrenceville. Why do I raise that? Again, campus design was a very, very rich area for the Olmstead firm with records for 411 campuses. So we have been delighted in the course of the last 18 months to work with a lot of colleges and universities uh, to bring attention to their Olmstead landscapes and we look forward to continuing to work with them in the years ahead. So with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Chris. Thank you very much. It was really fun this year to have a partnership with the National Association for Olmstead Parks, and I really appreciate the, uh, the effort in publicizing our challenge and documenting these great landscapes across the country. So uh, the slide that's up now, which is going to flicker here in and out, is uh, the theme for this coming year's challenge, which will start anytime now and go until July 31st, is when all entries are due. They're emailed in, it's Microsoft Word files. Um, and the theme is Working Landscapes, and our uh, House Subcommittee has picked this topic for this year. Um, really a topical one when you think of flood control and water conveyance and irrigation, but it could be agriculture or industrial, um, working in productive landscapes, uh, whether they're um, you know, unique or, or a very traditional type. Uh, we also are telling people that the hair document, the hair guidelines, Historic American Engineering Record, may be very useful in the way you look at these landscapes, and not to just think of it as a, as a structure like a dam, but how does the entire landscape work together? And we have some great examples uh, that we'll be sharing this year through the field, through the SLA, through articles, and through our Facebook uh, site uh, that might inspire you. But uh, I'd also like to shout out that we have Helen Erickson here. If you could stand up and wave. Helen is the uh, volunteer House Liaison Coordinator, National House Liaison Coordinator for ASLA. She was a former um, House Liaison for Arizona. And we have a few uh, House Liaisons in the audience. Uh, Doug Nelson of uh, uh, Northern California. Um, Gail Henderson King of Vermont. Um, and uh, Graham Soames of uh, Minnesota. And I don't know if there's anyone else that... Connecticut? Oh, right, great. What's your name, sir? Peter. Peter, that's right, thank you. Yeah, it's great because we don't often get to get together in the same room. And we'll have a meeting in December where everyone can join, but it's really nice to see everyone. And so now we have a little time. If anyone would like to gather in the pavilion here and discuss house, Helen and I will be available, and the fellow liaisons here, and um, have some brochures up on the table for house. And uh, it's really great. I thank everyone for coming and for honoring this great work that's coming from around the country. So thank you to everyone.